Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries. You want to see me do a magic trick? I'm going to make this desk float. <laughs> you didn't believe me, did you? I mean, I kind of made it float, right? So my magic trick may be a little rough around the edges, but this do-it-yourself floating broken leg desk is pretty slick. I'm so excited to be sharing with you how I made it, so if you're ready to get building, let's go. Also, as a side note, I will not promise that there may or may not be a few more quote-unquote magic tricks throughout the video, so stay tuned. So this desk is super simple in design. I really wanted something kind of plain in overall design so that the legs would be the cool factor. It's made of white oak and has a single drawer in the front. And if you didn't notice, the legs are made with moss deep pour clear resin. So the first thing that I did was start cutting down my lumber. I bought this white oak at my local hardwood store. They were having a half price sale. So I milled it down to the sizes that I needed for this desk. Because white oak posts are hard to find, I made my own post style legs by laminating a few layers of the wood. I ripped them down to about two and a half inches wide to get started so that when I glued three layers together, it would make almost a square post. Next was the hardest part of the entire project, breaking these oak boards. Oak is harder than I thought it was, and I originally wanted to glue up these posts and break them as one piece to make the broken legs, but I'm glad that I didn't because there's no way I could have broken a two and a half inch thick piece of oak. My alternative idea was to score and break each board individually and then laminate them together. This worked okay, but I did have a few challenges, like that it was still really hard to break. I have no idea what I'm doing. We'll see what happens. I used my miter saw to score a line about 24 inches from the end of the board like shown. The shallower the line, the messier the break, but the harder it was to crack. I attempted to simply break it by hand. Yeah, that wasn't happening. And then I tried to break it over a concrete block and that didn't work either. So then I tried clamps and tried to crack it over some scrap boards, nothing. I eventually found a good scoring depth and I could crack it by jumping on it, sitting on a concrete block, but it took a little trial and error. About a quarter inch of deep score cut seemed to be the happy medium. Once I scored my boards, I broke them along that line, but things got a little frustrating at times. But once I had my method down, I was able to fairly quickly break the rest of the pieces to make the legs. So there were three pieces times four legs, so I needed 12 broken pieces total. Once I had my 12 boards broken, I beat any that weren't quite as jagged as I wanted them with a hammer to split the ends a little more. I really wanted them to look broken, not just cut. Then I matched them together as best I could to make it look more like a natural break and glued up four legs of three boards each. Now it was time to build the forms to pour the resin. I used some scrap plywood and cut down pieces to build a form that would make a two and a half inch square by 32 inch long leg. I lined the plywood pieces with Tyvek tape to prevent the resin from sticking to the form. Then I screwed them together using wood screws. Oh, and again with the magic. Suddenly one form becomes four and the workbench is clean. Once all the forms were assembled, I caulked the joints to prevent any resin leaks during the pouring process. Now here is where I messed up. I used regular white caulk for this and during the pour, the caulk wrinkled up and folded up into my mold. Since it was clear, this was a problem. You'll see more on this later, but for now I recommend using a clear caulk for this, not white. After the forms were assembled, I moved back to the legs. I unclamped them, trimmed the unbroken end flesh, and then sanded them smooth. Then I vacuumed up any loose particles or dust from the broken ends, and while I was at it, I vacuumed any dust from the forms as well.
Before I started the pour, I applied some moss penetrating epoxy to the legs. I got this into every nook and cranny and crack and all over the broken ends to seal off the wood to help prevent air bubbles when I did the deep pour. I just mixed according to the instructions and brushed on with a cheap paintbrush. And again with the magic. I gave it a day to dry, then placed the legs into the mold and clamped them flat. Because the legs were two and a half inches thick, I poured this in three steps, about seven eight inches thick at a time. I mixed the deep pour epoxy in small batches and poured until I had the first layer on all four legs. One thing to note if doing a clear pour is that you should mix really well. I didn't mix that great on my first layer and you could see some like swirlies in the resin where it wasn't uniform in color. Because this cured so slow, most of the air bubbles came to the top and busted before it cured, but I did brush over it with a torch to get the surface bubbles gone before walking away. I let each layer cure to the point where it was hard but still a little tacky and then I poured the next layer. Once the third layer was poured, I did a little happy dance and slowly backed out of the shop and turned out the lights to let it cure for a good 36 hours before taking them out of the molds. To remove the legs, I removed all the screws from the forms and used a rubber mallet and a chisel to help pry the form away from the leg. It broke away pretty easy, but I was really careful not to damage anything. Because of the caulk issue that I mentioned earlier, I had to plane these legs to remove as much as I could to get everything nice and flat before starting to sand. This is a messy process. If you don't have caulk to remove in the corners of your molds, I would definitely skip planing if at all possible and just go straight to sanding. I trimmed a little of the ends off of the legs as well on the miter saw because, again with the caulk issue, then I moved to sanding. Sanding resin is a process. Wear a dust mask and get comfortable. You'll be there a while. I sanded everything smooth with 120, then moved to 220 grit, 400 grit, and eventually I wet sanded by hand with 800 grit and then 1500 grit to get it as clear as possible. Lots and lots of sanding. Once I had the legs ready to go, it was time to assemble the rest of the desk. I ripped some more oak boards to start assembling the apron of the desk. I've got the plans linked in the description below with all the dimensions for this build so I won't throw a bunch of numbers at you here in this video. I trimmed these boards to size and assembled using wood glue and dowels. I glued up the two sides first, then realized I should have drilled all the dowel holes first before gluing up anything. So I struggled through drilling the dowel holes for the back and the front side aprons and finally got that glued up as well. Because I was installing a drawer in the front, I cut these two front apron pieces only about a foot long so that I could put the drawer in between them. When I cut these, I cut them off the ends of the oak board that I was using for the front apron so that when I put the drawer front on, it was a continuous grain pattern across the front. While the glue dried on the base, I started gluing up the top. I used three oak boards for this and simply edge glued them together and clamped. Overall, I made this desk 22 inches deep.
While the glue was drying on top, I moved back to the base. I cut a couple of scrap plywood pieces and drilled pocket holes into the ends and just attached them between the front and the back aprons to give me somewhere to mount the drawer slides to. I installed a pair of ball bearing 16 inch drawer slides onto these pieces and started working on the drawer. I made the drawer from scrap plywood that I ripped down and cut dados in. I simply installed a piece of quarter inch plywood into the dados as the bottom of the drawer and assembled the drawer box using pocket holes and screws. I installed the drawer into the desk and then moved back to the top. Once the glue was dry on the top, I trimmed it down to the right length and sanded it smooth. I attached the top using some L brackets from underneath. I wanted to allow for some movement, so I used L brackets with large holes and screws slightly smaller than those holes so that there was some wiggle room for the wood to move. After the top was installed, I screwed the drawer front on from the inside of the drawer and moved on to finishing. I attempted to finish this desk with a clear coat poly, but when I brushed it onto the resin, it looked terrible. So I sanded, and I sanded, and I sanded all of the finish off. So I ended up sanding again from 220 to 400 to 800 to 1500 grit, and then try to wax. It was much better, but I was really tired of sanding. I ended up finishing the desk in walrus oil furniture wax, and I was really happy with how it turned out. Although I'm a total amateur with this stuff, so maybe there's a better option to finish resin with, but it's too late, I'm tired of sanding, so I'm leaving it as is. I brought it inside and stepped back to take a good look. I was really going for a desk that looked like it was floating, and being realistic, I knew that you'd still see the clear resin, so it's not like it would be completely invisible, but I was really impressed with how well this turned out. With a quick glance, you may think it's floating and then do a double take before you realize the truth. And I mean, I'm pretty happy with a double take, so that's good with me. If you'd like more details on this project, the materials used, the plans, or the step-by-step -step tutorial, check out the links in the description below. And if you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you do me a favor and give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. And if you aren't already subscribed to my channel, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on what's coming next. It could be another magic trick. You never know. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. And until next time, happy building.